once your paper has been reviewed, whether by yourself, your classmates, your instructor, whatever, uh, we then get to the next phase of the process, and that is known as revision. And you will notice here we're not going in a straight line at all anymore, uh, because writing is not a straight line process. Um, you, tend, you generally are going to be repeating various things. So revision, then, is what you do after you've got some review. And what we want to look at is, what is revision? One way to think of revision is that it is the big picture stuff. So when we're looking at revision, we're looking at broad issues. We're looking at, do you have a clear main point? Uh, something that uh, you're proving to the reader or something that you want to, to get across. Another issue we look at when we're looking at revision is your supporting details. And we're looking at two issues involving the supporting details. One is the quantity of them. That is, do you have enough details to get your point across, to prove it? Uh, the other issue you're going to look to is quality. That is to say, are your logical points well-reasoned and solid? Um, are the details relevant to the point that you're making? So those are all issues that you're going to look at uh, in terms of revision. Another issue that revision covers is your organization, which is to say, are you covering points in a logical order? Are you showing the connections between ideas, how you get from this idea to this idea to this idea? So those are all issues that we look at when we're looking at revision. We're looking at the big picture. Now, when you're doing revision, uh, you will often be going back and doing more drafting. Sometimes you may be even going back and doing some more pre-writing. For example, if you're short on supporting details, you may go back to the pre-writing and brainstorm a few more supporting details. Now, you will notice at this point, we are going around in circles. And depending on what class you're in, you may go around in circles multiple times. You'll do your pre-writing, you'll draft, you'll review it yourself. You'll revise based on what you spotted during your own review, rework it, bring it in for your classmates for peer review, uh, make revisions based on the recommendations you get from the classmates, bring it around, turn it into the instructor, who then reviews it again. And you may be going around this cycle several times, depending on your particular instructor's policy about revisions. I know some instructors uh, don't want large numbers of revisions. I know other instructors uh, allow plenty of revisions to continue to work on improving your writing. So you'll want to check with your instructor what the policy is. But you're typically going to go around this circle at least three times, and possibly more. Now, at some point, you get to where the revision is uh, pretty much done with. You've got everything pretty much the way you want it. Uh, you've got these big picture issues taken care of. And that's when you come out and you do editing. So if we're looking at the difference between revision and editing, what we want to see is revision is the big picture. Editing is what I call the nitpicking details. So editing is where you worry about your grammar and your spelling and your punctuation. and something that's known as style, which has to do with, um, is your writing clear? Does it flow well? 
can the reader gather the meaning from it relatively easily. Now, we notice that here we save the editing for the last. We don't put the editing into this big cycle, and there are a couple of reasons for that. One is, if you have a really bratty sentence that just refuses to get in line, just won't behave, if you spend 20 or 30 minutes working on finally making that sentence perfect, and then you come along and do some revision and you end up deleting that sentence, you've wasted all the work you did on that sentence. The other really important reason for saving the editing for last is if you get caught up in the grammar up here in the pre-writing and drafting, that is absolutely a recipe for writer's block. If you think it has to be absolutely perfect from the get-go, you're going to get hung up on the grammar, your ideas are going to stop flowing, and you're going to get really stuck. So don't fret about the grammar up in this stage of the writing process. Now, there is one exception where the grammar does matter in the revision process. That's if your grammar is so completely mixed up uh, that you can't even really tell what you meant to say, uh, then grammar does become an issue for revision. But most of the grammar, save it for the editing. Save it until you've got everything organized, have your clear main point, all of that. Do the editing last. It is important. Uh, you're not going to be able to pass your class if your grammar is, is not good. But save it. Don't get hung up on the grammar up there. Now, once you're done editing, we get to the final stage of the process, which is known as publication. Um, this is just simply saying that's the final form that your writing is taking. Uh, it does not necessarily mean that you send it off to the newspaper and it gets printed on the letters to the editor page. Although, by the way, I don't know about your instructors, uh, but in my classes, if you do that, if it does get printed, that is worth an extra credit point. Uh, you'll have to take that up with your own instructor if, if it's not me. Uh, but publication really just means the final form that your writing has taken. So, for example, if we go back to that thank you note to your grandmother, publication is when you put a stamp on it and stick it in the mail. Or if you have a more modern type of grandmother, uh, it's when you click the send button on the email. Um, or the shopping list publication is when my husband rips it off the refrigerator and goes to the store with it. So publication just means the final form. For a formal paper in your class, publication is likely to be when you turn in the final finished version to your instructor. Some classes, you may be putting a portfolio together at the end of the term, and that would be, publication would be that final absolutely perfect work that you turn in with your portfolio at the end of the term. So that's the writing process. Uh, as I've said, you use it even if you don't think you're using it. Uh, but for a formal paper, it helps to think more formally about it. And so this is a way you can go about producing a piece of good, coherent writing.